What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a freelance artist journey. This video, we're going to talk about the five reasons art commissions go bad. It is traumatic to go through a transaction with a customer, with a client, that goes south. This is something that we as freelancers don't want to happen is for a client to not be satisfied with our work, to get into the dreaded cycle of revisions over and over and over again. You know, all of these things are things that we don't want to think about, but it happens. And now I've been freelancing on and off for over 20 years now. And I've been consistently doing digital illustrations for the past four years. So I've had my share of good, bad, and ugly commissions. And so I want to share my thoughts on what makes a commission assignment go bad. And what I've found is that there's typically five different reasons that I've come across. Number one, poor communication. And now that goes without saying, I know, but it bears repeating over and over and over again. You've got to be able to communicate on both sides, obviously both the client and the artist. Because, see, from the client's point of view, or not their point of view, but on their end, they may have difficulty getting what's in their head through to you as the artist, uh, you know, in an eloquent way, something that you can grasp and run with. And that's understandable. But then on the other hand, as the artist, we may feel intimidated obviously you're intimidated by just this whole situation this person's giving you their hard-earned money and they want you to perform but you have to be able to clearly communicate if you don't understand their instructions and sometimes we as artists for fear of seeming unprofessional or seeming like uh, you know, we lack the experience or something that you know we will say oh yeah I get it when we really don't and we're trying we're fishing in the dark and so we've got to be able to articulate that you know we don't understand something one thing that I like to do to alleviate some of this is to get everything written down in the contract that way they can read through it and say if they like something if they don't like something you can make changes that's a good first step and you should have a contract anyway um, and the second part of that would be to leave a paper trail have a paper trail and I know a lot of clients like to they like to have that initial conversation over the phone to get a feel for the artist to really communicate what they're trying to say and that's fine but you need to have things written down so you know obviously take notes but you know I'd like to go back in once I had that initial conversation over the phone or if you have certain benchmarks that you want to meet and you want to talk about those things over the phone that's fine you do that but then go back and follow up with an email uh, you know, just going over what you spoke about so that you can have it in writing and they you have their response in writing and you can go back and forth and then you can go back and refer to those things. That way there's no guesswork as to what did they say or I can't read my chicken scratch because I was writing so fast and that kind of thing. So that's number one. The second reason is that the number of revisions that the customer is paying for is not clearly defined. And again, if you have your contract, you need to have that in there. To say, 
you get three revisions is good but to break it down and say you get two minor and one major revision is even better and then if you want to go into what the difference between a major and minor revision is that's the best because you give your customer clearly defined guidelines as to what to expect because again we don't want to get in that nightmarish endless loop of revisions over and over this we need to change this and we want that done so if you lay it all out in your contract then you alleviate a lot of that confusion and let a customer know that above and beyond the initial set of revisions that they're paying for they can have more but that comes at an extra cost and you state that in your contract and it just makes a world of difference number three too much money exchanged up front or not enough and now what do I mean by that well the obvious thing is you've got to get a deposit now I know that many people have been burned on both sides excuse me <clears throat> you have horror stories of clients who have paid artists and not heard back from them and then you've got artists who have done the work and not heard back from the client both sides everyone's kind of afraid and we've all got trust issues of course it's understandable so that's why you need to use a service like PayPal and you know this is not a commercial for PayPal I use PayPal I use uh, Venmo I believe it's pronounced and a few uh, <coughs> excuse me a few others it's kind of dry in here it is it's like 99 degrees outside and it's hot and stuffy so excuse me while I take a drink of water but yeah so use PayPal or a service that uh, will again leave a paper trail I know with PayPal if you get everything in writing you can submit that and say hey I hired this artist to do a job for me I paid them 50 bucks up front a hundred dollars whatever it is and I haven't heard back from them PayPal will go to bat for you and refund you your money and take it up with the artist and so that's a good that gives you a, a peace of mind you know as the customer that you don't get burned on a job on the other end of the spectrum there are those clients who want to pay up front everything you know maybe it's a, a desired artist and they've been waiting on you know commission list and they feel like they need to plop down all the money or sometimes the artist may ask for that money up front well keep in mind that human nature is for us to perform and get a reward for that performance at the end and so if you take that away there's really no incentive to finish now as professionals obviously without question you say you're gonna do a job you do that job regardless to whether you have the money up front or not but again we're dealing with human nature if you hand a person a medal and then tell them to run the race you know your your outcome is kinda iffy it's kinda up in the air so you know and I've had clients who have paid me all up front and you know I have to perform and I do but you don't have that payoff at the end of you know once I'm finished then I get paid so you know I always tell my clients you know just half up front or if it's a large project and you know a third up front and then the rest on the back end is fine you know I like that like it that way so then that gives me something to push for to strive for number four letting the artist be the artist 
Now, this is kind of a touchy subject, but it needs to be said that there are clients who have this idea, they have this dream, this vision, and they're birthing this child, so to speak, uh, so to speak. And they're nurturing this thing and it's important to them. And so they need an artist to help them bring it to light. But a lot of times they don't want to totally let it go. They really want to control it. And a lot of times you end up suffocating the project. Uh, an artist is an artist for a reason. They have the skill set. They have the experience. And you need to be able to let them do their thing. Let them explore this project for you and get you the best results. You know, if you could do it yourself, you probably would. But even still, a second or third perspective is always better than just your own point of view. Because you may not be able to see every aspect of it as clearly as having someone else come in and look at it. You know, yeah, let the artist be the artist and give them license to do their job. There was an interview that someone had with a uh, movie director. And this particular director said that they never they never stifle or or prevent the actor from uh, exploring their role and and this 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 director said uh, don't tell me or don't suggest what you want to do just do it and either it will work or it won't work but if you tell me then I'm going to rationalize and reason it away I'm going to dispute it so I like that approach that's just just a bit of advice or words for the client to let let your artists have wings and fly free and explore your project and help you bring about the best project possible now on the flip side of that as an artist we need to be willing to challenge the customer and you know, if a customer is making a request that is or that could be detrimental to their project, we need to speak up and say so. Now, you do so with respect. But, um, yeah, the, you're they're hiring you for your expertise. And that's not just to be an, an automaton and draw for them but they're hiring you for your skill set for your experiences all of these things put together make you the creative mind that you are and you don't just do everything that they ask of you you may have to challenge some things and what I like to do is present my case for a challenge in this manner I would say yes I can make that change for you no problem However, I don't think it's the best direction we can go in. And these are the reasons. And then also provide alternatives for them. We could do this and it would get you the results that you are looking for. So as an artist, we need to be able to look past what they're asking us to do and see the result they're trying to get. You know, as opposed to just changing this or doing that just because they say so and because they've got the checkbook. No, we are the creative mind. We have a stake in this, you know, and if you want your artist to feel that they are a part of it and have a stake in your project, they're going to give you better results as a result of that. Then, you know, let them have more creative license and do their job and with that we, we come to number five separating art from business 
and this is something I've I had challenges with in my early years. Uh, artists, we're obviously we're creative minded, right brain oriented, but you have to be able to switch to being business focused when need be. And so this, you, you know, a lot of times you find that you have to switch back and forth constantly when you go from negotiating the contract, negotiating price, negotiating ownership of the art and how much ownership, you know, these are all left brain things, you know. Uh, and then when you do actually get into the job, then you've switched over to the right side and it's more about emotions and feelings and passion of the creative process. But without the business side, there is no creative side. One way that I've found to make that transition easier is by writing down and having a list of my bullet points of, of goals that I need to hit. You know, have I sent them the contract and had them look it over? Did they send it back signed? You know, now we need to go into this phase and I send them questions about the project, you know, and then we go back and forth from there. Then I can go into the creative process. And so I kind of treat it as if I am a real estate agent. You know, I used to do real estate a little bit and they work from a script. They, you know, there is the schmoozing side of it that you're talking back and forth with a buyer or a seller or whoever but then there's the paperwork that needs to be done and they're very methodical in that and there has to be a signature here and there has to be this clause and we have to do inspections the same thing is true with you working your small business as an illustrator as a freelance artist you've got to be on task and on point with the business side before you can get to the creative side. If it's all creative and no business, then we end up fulfilling the stereotype of being that starving artist, which is no good. These are the things that I've found that cause those pitfalls for commissions. You know, I hope that you can take them and that they help you. I've approached this from both perspectives as an illustrator, as an artist, and as a, a client or a customer, I, you know, I kind of want it to be fair, even though my being an artist, I'm maybe more biased on that side. But you know, I wanted a fair argument for both sides to get benefit. So I hope that this was helpful for you. And uh, I thank you for listening. And we'll see you in the next show.